We started in hard times to bring us all in into the laughter. Welcome to a special bonus live recording of Public Power Underground coming to you on location at NWPPA's annual meeting in beautiful Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. We're recording a series of recruiting pitches from executives at the welcome reception in an attempt to collect the best messages for getting new folks into public power professions in a special recruiting video series. I'm Brian Fawcett. And I'm Humira Falkenberg. And I'm Paul Dockery. We're joined by Bear Prairie, the general manager of Idaho Falls Power and Idaho, Idaho Falls Fiber. Bear serves on numerous boards, including Public Power Council, Utah Associated Municipal Power Systems, Idaho Consumer Owned Utilities Association, Idaho Energy Resources Authority Board, and the Pacific Northwest Utility Conference Committee. Idaho Falls Power is a municipal electric utility that has served the city of Idaho Falls, Idaho since 1900. The utility owns and operates five hydropower plants that deliver about one third of the city's electricity needs. In addition to electricity utility, they offer high speed, affordable internet capability for homes and businesses. And the service territory is absolutely gorgeous, if I may say so myself. Welcome to Public Power Underground, Bear. Welcome back. Oh, yes, thank you. Thank Welcome you for having back. me. You closed out the live recording last year at NWPPA's annual meeting. You were the last one. You mean I ruined it, so you just closed it up after exactly. that. Exactly. So we're doing it again, so we can close up. You're the you're the you're our you're our final, final guest tonight. He's the closer. You're the closer for tonight. Well, we're asking thanks. all the executives to give us their best pitch for recruiting people to public power. What is your what? How, how, what do you think compels people in public power to keep their careers? New people to join it. How do we get more professionals into into our field? I actually don't think it's as hard as we make it. Of course, public power is really good at trying to make things maybe a little harder than they oh. should be. But, but I think that it's really not um, not that hard. We just have to articulate what our purpose is. Because one of the things that I've seen, at least around my organization, is uh, this: you know, the younger generation, people in their, you know, well, maybe, maybe I'm dating myself, right? Younger than me, you know, people in their twenties <laughs> and even in their early thirties. They really want to have a, a purpose. They want to belong to, a, you know, a, a cause, you know. And I think that's what you're seeing around with, you know, events in, in our country. And this, I mean, look at what happens on social media. It's like all of a sudden things go viral because people want to have a cause and a purpose, something that's better themselves and be part of a, a movement. Well, we've been doing this for, you know, well, Idaho Falls, 122 years, right? That's Talk right. about a movement of like a purpose. Every day you have that purpose. And I think we just have to explain that and articulate what public power is. Like every day you can go out and say, we do this service and this purpose for the community. And they know it and they appreciate it. And the same thing that we need to do, like me as an executive, is explain that to the community so the community realizes we're different than an investor-owned utility. So when they see our employees out there, and our workers, especially on outages and storms, I mean, those are the stories, you you know, where people are bringing cookies and giving them food and bringing in, you know, here's a line coming. And they really see that it, it is a different purpose that we do. It's not about the profits and the money and the shareholders. It really is a cause. And, you know, and we all hear those stories in our utilities of, there's nothing more amazing than when you close that fuse and the lights come back on. Yeah, that's a great yeah. feeling. And spreading that feeling. to even the engineers and the office staff so they can experience that. Those are life-changing events yep. that will keep people coming back and want to stay you know, working within that public power. So I think it's, it's talking about that service for the community and service for, you know, our our you know members and and public that, that we serve do you think you you're the, you think our mission differentiates us from other types of employment is what i'm hearing you say that communication of that mission helps differentiate us from other places yeah. you can think and i think the, you know maybe the problem is us in, in public power we take it for granted we don't think about it. it's just kind of what we do it's in our dna but we need to talk about it and we need to share that and talk about their employees. Because I talk about with our, with our newer employees and new hires and talk about that higher purpose. They're like, well, I've never thought about it that way. I just assumed it was a job and a paycheck. And it's like, no, it serves. So, that yes, you get a paycheck, but you're also providing the service. And it, you see them really elevate their game. And they enjoy it. They get that pleasure. So you can say, yeah, uh, you can go off and do community service, but you're also, do, you know, this is like, you know, you're part of the community. You're part of the fabric of what it is. And, and, and they stay. 
Yeah, so this is a message we haven't heard yet. You're the last one of the night, but communicating it to the people in the community is incredibly important so that it can get out. So it becomes mm -hmm. part of the fabric of understanding. What do you think of that, Brian? Do you get the message enough? Yeah, that, that really resonates me. And the other thing that, that you said, just presenting public power as a cause and a movement yeah. is huge. You know, the up and coming workforce really does resonate with that sort of thing. So if we can we can relate to them in that way, I think that is a, a great way to get folks interested in public power. It aligns with a purpose driven life yep. for the next generation. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, absolutely. And we need to make sure we're communicating that to our employees too. Yeah to make sure that they can communicate it within the communities right. and to make sure that they can communicate it to their yeah. kids so that they, when they go to college, they come back and work at yeah. a public facility. Really, it's that education on, on two parts. Of yeah. Educate our workforce of really what, what they're there doing in the community. And then you have to educate your, your customers of we are different than the investor owned. And it's a, it's a two-way street. And all of a sudden now they're talking to each other and seeing each other in a different light. And that's very powerful and a very powerful movement that we see in our community continue to grow with awareness. But, you know, me as an executive had to, you know, start doing those billboards, those media outreach, yeah. you know, buying that PR space to talk about, hey, this is what these gals and guys in our workforce that work for the utility are doing for you every day. We are different and, and something to be proud of. Yep. Yeah, so, I love that message. It's like mutually beneficial, right? You get it out there in the in the community so people learn about public power and then organically hopefully it goes to folks looking for jobs the younger generation that message is just out there to be seen to be heard passed around by others and just organically brings people in yep. and to show the pride of running an electric utility mm -hmm. company and how it serves the community right and no longer being invisible right yeah. no longer yeah. being invisible um so long so much of our career is, you know, we we're in the shadows and we're not up in front and it's, it doesn't look glorious and sexy work, but with what you're saying Bear, is that we need to actually tell the story that this, this movement has been going on for over 140 years. Um, and it keeps reinventing itself. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and it's easy. We just, kind of forget about, you know, yeah. it's like, oh, well, everybody knows. Well, they don't. Yep. And there's always new people and, you know, they move from different service territories and new areas and that, you know, public power community and that service really will keep people coming back. And also as they grow up and you're engaging with them, it's like, you know, all of a sudden they look at it of, you know, everybody, you know, everybody grows up in an area of, where they, I want to be a fireman or I want to be a policeman and go help people. It's like, well, guess what? Go into the utility industry and, and, and any of these different jobs. Also educate them. Uh, it's not just the lineman. It's it's the engineer. It's the customer yep. service rep. It's the design tech. I mean, it really takes warehouse personnel. It really takes that uh, larger, you know, village to keep the lights on and, and explain that to them. And then go, oh, wow, this is service. This is an, an integral fabric of every community because... Sorry, and this is maybe the bragging point that we should all do. The electricity isn't on. None of this other stuff works anyway. Yeah. So yeah. It's okay know, to brag. Fire, yeah, it's okay. fire, police. It's like, yeah, you guys see guys. Guess what? When the lights go out, there's no electricity. Everybody's calling it's us. Foundation. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So uh, this is the last last person that we're going to interview. Uh, I wanna, what, one of my frameworks is part of an executive's role is to be a storyteller, a recruiter, and to allocate the resources appropriately. And I think we've gotten some great pitches from the executives in our industry about ways to recruit. And there's been some great storytelling along the way. Thank you for your storytelling, Bear, because I think that's a critical component of being an executive and leader is to learn how to tell the story, um, to be compelling and to keep your people compelled. So thank you. Did I get the three right? You like yep. those three? You did, that's great, that's spot on. Okay, great. <laughs> I think we're, we're closing out the episode. Thank you so much, yep. Bear, for Thanks joining for us. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bear. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Right, this is me. Bears was the last pitch of the night, uh, the final installation of our recruiting video series from NWPPA's annual meeting in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Thanks to all our guests for pitching us on public power and, and electric utilities broadly. Uh, did get some criticism in there, and we accept our criticism and change the way we think. Uh, thanks to Hugh Myra and Brian for joining us and, and helping uh, 
uh, or being wonderful guest hosts. Uh, if you enjoyed this series, dear listener, send a note to Scott Corwin, Brenda Dunn, or wherever you know at NWBPA to see if we can be invited back next year. Humaira, do you feel valued and appreciated? I do. Thank you so much. Good. Brian, I value and appreciate you. Do you feel I it? I feel it. I now I have a steelhead belt, so I have yes, like a yes. physical value and appreciation. That is, is so good. I will leave it to you, Brian, to close this out. All right. To make sure you don't miss the next episode or other great bonus content, you can sign up for an unintrusive newsletter with links to all the ways to consume this fascinating content at publicpowerunderground.substack.com. Otherwise, you can subscribe on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. You can also get fabulous merch on Shopify. You don't have to be subscribed to News Data to get this podcast, but it sure does make our podcast make a lot more sense. That's all for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Public Power Underground for electric utility enthusiasts. Public Power Underground, it's work to watch. Public Power Underground is a production of Klatskin IPUD and News Data. It's brought to you with the support of NWPPA and TEA. NWPPA was the host for the conference that brought us together and helped coordinate our recording space. A special thanks to Scott Corwin, Brenda Dunn, and Connie Filbert for their help. The Northwest Public Power Association believes in public power. You can find more information about NWPPA at nwppa.org. That's nwppa.org. The presenting sponsor for Season 4 of Public Power Underground is TEA. The Energy Authority is a nonprofit energy portfolio management company whose mission is to help clients maximize the value of their assets and meet their power supply goals. If you know someone at TEA, send them a note of thanks for their support of Season 4. You can learn more about TEA on their website at teainc.org. That's T-E-A-I-N-C dot org. These views expressed here are own and not the official views of Klatskin IPUD, news data, or the organization of the guests also appearing on Public Power Underground. Public Power Underground is electric utility and electric utility adjacent news from a power department's perspective. It's written and directed by Klatskin IPUD's power department led by me, Paul Dockery, and it's edited and published by the stellar team at Pioneer Utility Resources led by associate producer Sarah Wooden. Our theme song, Roll On Enthusiast, was rewritten, performed, and recorded by Aaron Guillory and Ian Bledsoe. Public Power Underground for electric utility enthusiasts. Public Power Underground, it's work to watch.